Perfect. 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 Yo, what's good guys? It's your boy Dixon from Twitter Designs. Today's video is gonna be a little bit different than my usual content. I'll be showing you guys how I design a streetwear brand completely from scratch. So maybe after this video, you have a better understanding of how these things work and come up one yourself. Before I begin, if you enjoy content like streetwear or apparel designs or Photoshop tutorials, those kind of stuff, then you've come to the right place. I upload once a week, so make sure you drop a like and subscribe for more. All right, that's it for the intro. Let's go. Perfect. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is create a mood board for the brand. You can do this on Pinterest or anywhere you want, really. Um, this is so that we can understand the visual language of the brand essentially finding out the message that um, You want to voice out through the designs and products So to give you guys an example today, I'm gonna create a fake brand called Eden Maid. So I'm aiming for that classy luxury um, Streetwear so something clean like Palm Angels, Vetamons and maybe Amiri So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna look up some pictures that don't necessarily have to be shirt designs they can just be some lifestyle photos or just random aesthetic stuff that collectively paint a picture of the audience that I'm gonna sell my shirts to I think that's enough for me to understand the brand direction that I'm going for. I really like how the tall serif font here look. It's classy and it has that luxury vibe, um, which is something I want for this brand. I think I'll go that route for the logo. Next step is creating the logo. A lot of people overthink this part. You have no idea the crazy things that people ask me to design for the brand. And honestly, I get it. You want to be unique, but there is a unspoken rule when it comes to streetwear logos. You know what brands like Essentials, Off-White and Hypebeast all have in common in the logos? They all use the same font, which is Helvetica. They do it because it works. It just works. but. You know, I'm not telling you to use Helvetica. What I mean is just keep it simple. So no pictorial logos and no emblem logos. Uh, here's what I'm going to do for Eden Mate. I'm going to use this font called Chapaza and then I'm going to stretch it vertically to give it height so that it looks more tasteful. And then add a cool trademark symbol at the end and that's it. So guys, now we're gonna work on the designs. I'm gonna show you a couple tips here where you can save some money. So if you're not a designer, then you better pay attention. Um, the idea I'm going for the first design is I'm gonna crop this angel from this old painting and then I'm gonna put the logo up top and then maybe a couple more text and smaller elements at the bottom. And that's it. Quick note guys, you're probably wondering, isn't it legal to use these paintings and then sell them on your shirts? Well, if the original creator of a certain painting has been dead for more than 100 years, then that work of art is now a public domain. That's why you see people always use Mona Lisa in their designs. Um, so it's kind of like a loophole. Obviously, if you're a designer and you're designing for your client, it's best to add more stuff to it. Um, otherwise, it's just going to be a ripoff.
this design looks good for now i was going for that clean aesthetic so no heavy edits needed there i mean i could probably do more stuff to it to make it more original but for the sake of this video we're just gonna keep it short So guys for the second design i'm just going to use the text from the first design i'll drag it and drop it into this new folder that i made just now and then i'll rearrange it and turn it into a brand new design so to speak um, this is how you can save some money instead of getting two different designs you know unless you have the budget for it of course but if you're just starting out and this is your first drop then you definitely want to consider doing this Another way you can save even more dough is printing the same design on different silhouettes. For example, I can use the first design that I made earlier and then print it on hoodies or sweaters so that I can have more products to offer my customers, you know, instead of just tees all around. Um, anyway, the plan for the second design is I'm going to print it on off-white colored tees. Again, we'll continue on that clean luxury streetwear. So no heavy edits and just uh, minimal aesthetic. For the third and final design, I feel like a taupe colorway shirt would go well with the overall vibe of this brand. Um, we'll see how well everything flows together when I do the mock-up in a bit. But yeah, I plan to go back to the angel theme as well for this design. So I'll use the wing of this angel statue that I found on Pexels and then apply the threshold effect and then put it in a rectangular box after that i'll again rearrange the same text from the previous designs So guys, now I'm adding this line that I found on Wikipedia to the design explaining what virtue means. I feel like it's a good addition to the design as a secondary element. Uh, now I'm dragging the type tool, making sure it's within the width of the logo. That way it looks cleaner without having text everywhere. And then, uh, oh, you want to make sure that the text aren't too small because sometimes when you print them, they come out blurry uh, regardless of the printing technique that you use. I'm gonna do the mock-ups of all the designs that I've made today and then I'll show you guys the full collection at the end and then I'll explain how you can drop them in different collections even though there's just actually three designs before that though if you like this hoodie mock-up I got it available on my store I shot it myself here at my own studio it's massive going at 4,000 by 4,000 pixels at 300 dpi you can check it out link in the description below Cody Okay guys, so this is the full collection. I've added a few more products like the joggers, the socks, and the dad cap here. Again, I'm using the same design for all of them. That way, I have more products to offer. Same thing with the sweatshirt. It's the same design as the taupe t-shirt, but it's different silhouette and it's like a variation of the original design. This way, you can use all your designs to the fullest. Now assuming you're a tight budget because you're a starting brand, obviously you cannot drop everything in a single collection. What you can do is you can break down these products into smaller drops. In the industry, we call it the capsule drop. 
For example, this is the first collection. I'm pairing the black t-shirt and hoodie with the taupe t-shirt. I figured there would be a cool combination because the colors kind of complement each other very well. Now for the second drop, maybe a month later, I'm dropping this collection of the white tee with the black joggers and socks. The idea is that they all match together as a single outfit. Um, the socks are also a good upsell product to the strap. Maybe you can offer discounts if people buy the joggers or um, the off-white shirt with the socks as a bundle. Okay, so the final drop is made up of these outerwear pieces. So the white hoodie with the wash sweatshirt and another accessory piece which is the dead cap. They are still a part of the same collection. Now, when you look at the full collection, you can see that the design language is consistent. These products supplement each other very well, making them overall very cohesive. Um, it depends on the aesthetic of the brand, but still you should keep that in mind when you're creating a full collection like this. Alright guys, so that is it for today's video. I hope you learned something from it and could apply that to your own brand. A lot of people DM me and ask me to come up with names for their brand, which is not how this works. The name and the overall vision of your clothing brand should come from you and not the designer. You know, if you're that uncreative, then maybe this isn't really for you. Anyway guys, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. I'll be uploading more after now. You definitely don't want to miss out. Follow me on TikTok for exclusive content. And as always, thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.